Some small new piece of statistics, recently noticed, a player scored 3 out of 3 consecutive 3-minute blitz games against approximately 2,350 in average rating opposition, all different players, which is equivalent to 3,600 plus performance in those 3 consecutive games. I believe everyone would find this interesting. This is the first of the three games that I want to show you. In this one, White, a SAS player, has an accuracy of 96.5. The opening is the Karokon, and we are in the main line. At this point, the point is captured, and your black has usually three options, to play Bishop out, to play Knight out, or to play Knight here. Now, lots of Grandmasters like to play this line, and then after the trade, they take with the E pawn, and we get to this position. White has a majority here of pawns on the queen side, and black should have a weakness, like those two double pawns. But here, black is usually very solid. Black is going on with the bishop out, short castle, and then develop the final two pieces, and it should be all right. White instead has two options, to go short, uh, long or short castle. It depends a bit how black plays. Anyway, c3 is very important to support this pawn before developing the bishop. Bishop out and bishop out, and now knight h6. Uh, this move is not the main line, the main line is to simply castle, but it's fine because you want to develop this knight anyway, and probably this knight wants to go back uh, to c7 and then to e6, and there will be very powerful. Uh, I played, <laughs> I'm the sus player, yes. I played queen c2, looking at this pawn, now castle is not possible, and black played the move h6. Before, the main line was, was to play uh, h6 or g6, but this is a new move, and the idea is that when black is going to capture long, uh, we will have opposite side castling, and in opposite ca side castling, the plan is clear. You have to push the pawns, attack, open files, and give mate. But this move, uh, this move h5, is actually blocking really well the move g4, together with the two bishops that are looking very well at all these squares, it's not so easy for white to proceed to go on with the attack. That's why h5 is now one of the main uh, moves, actually the main line. Knight e2. Knight c7, h3, this is used to avoid h4 and h3. Uh, knight d5, and here I decided to long castle. This line actually has been showed me for the first time by Alex Banzea, which is also a YouTuber, and uh, is amazing, um, and he helped me so much with the preparation. What you play, you go for short castle, and then basically uh, your opponent should also play short castle, and then you play against two things. One, against this weak pawn, that can always be a target, you can try to attack it. Um, not so easy, but a knight here could be already attacking it. Now, of course, you don't want the bishop to take, and then your king side looks uh, weak. But also another plan is to play for the center, so to play the move c4, and have a stronger center, because you have two pawn, your opponent is just controlling it from the uh, side. Bishop e6, rook e1, now there are some very natural moves. h4 is usually also played, um, honestly, I'm not sure why. <laughs> uh, maybe to avoid the knight from getting to g3. Yeah. I played a3 because I want to play the move c4. If I play c4 now, the knight goes there attacking the queen and the bishop, and I have to say goodbye to my bishop here. And I love the bishop here. b5 is a very logical move, stopping the move c4. And now I was thinking uh, how to go on. I don't see a very clear way to develop my bishop, and so I played the move a4. Mm, that's an inaccuracy. Okay, uh, apparently I'm not cheating. <laughs> Actually, if you see very well, this inaccuracy is a little bit stupid. It's like the second best move, with different of 0 0.05 from the best move. Uh, so, I wouldn't trust this inaccuracy sign here, because this is a great move. We are attacking this pawn that is now attacked twice by the bishop and the pawn, and it's just protected once by this pawn. So black had to protect it with the queen, apparently this is also an inaccuracy. Uh, and now I decided to trade trade, and I had a very creative idea, slide my rook here. Uh, what I want to do, there is a tactical reason, I want to take here, the queen takes, and then I take there, and I won a pawn. Now I wasn't super sure, because my rook here seems a little bit too much in the black field, and if the rook cannot come back, I might lose the rook. But then after, um, for example, bishop takes, queen takes, rook takes, king e7, let's say, uh, attacking the rook, the rook has no squares, but I could play, for example, the move c4, and after the queen's move, the move c5, and I'm protecting my rook. I'm not sure if this is all good, but this is what I was thinking about. 
and they surprised me and went with the move Lawn Castle. Man, when I saw this move, I was like quite surprised because usually you want the castle to bring the king to security. Here they castle to bring the king into danger. I understand a little bit their idea. They saw that now this move is not possible because after this, uh, now I can't take because the rook is protected. Actually here there is a crazy line that now you see the engine is suggesting c4. And after this, I take here, I give a check and I'm going to win another bishop. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't want to get caught immediately, you know. So I went for another move. Here, I was thinking, let me say, let me tell you what I was thinking about. So I was calculating the move c4 because, of course, when your opponent is castling in danger, you want to open up files and try to give mates. But if I play c4, there is still knight b4, which would be a 4. I was also thinking, oh, it would be really be nice to bring a rook here, so I'm attacking this pawn one more time. Uh, then I was calculating, like, okay, where can I bring this bishop out? And then I was looking, okay, here it would be hanging. Here the knight would be capturing. Uh, here I cannot, here I cannot. And then I, I thought, like, okay, bishop d2 actually can be an idea and i play this move is just is, which is actually a really a good move now there are all the threats possible c4 can be played because after knight before i can simply trade here and then discovery checks are there is really a nice position also the rook can join the party and with the next move of my opponent i don't remember yet they played just g6 i mean honestly this move is doing nothing I played first rook here, attacking this pawn, they protected with the bishop, and now c4. And now I felt like I was vibing, for real. This knight is under attack, this pawn is under attack, and I'm threatening a discovery check. They played the move knight b7, and then I was, for a second, a little bit worried, because my rook is under attack, and I'll show you, if I simply move my... My, the most obvious move is to just retreat uh, the rook, I lose lots of my advantage. Anyway, I played another move. I will show you all the rest of the game, what happened during the live game. I'll take there because this knight is now pinned. This is not going to be just a win. This is going to be a destruction thing. Threatening mate. So, Chuck. Chuck. Ooh. That's gonna be really nice. <laughs> nice. Wow. This was a 96.5 accuracy. So I have an official request. Can please Mr. Kramnik check out my games and find out if they are legit? Because I'm suspicious of myself. And right after this game, we have another one with 95.2 accuracy. Are we kidding? Are we serious? I don't know. E45, night out, and we are in the scotch uh, game. Uh, here, you have to take the central pawn, the knight takes back, and now there are basically two lines, knights, uh, knight f6 or bishop c5. I like to go with the knight here on f6. I'm already attacking this pawn. Now, the main line is to first trade the knight and then to push this pawn on e5. After the pawn goes to e5, black plays queen e7 to pin this pawn, a white plays queen e2, and then you have to move this knight here. And then there is c4, now there are two moves, bishop, uh, sorry, knight away, or bishop here, counter pinning this pawn so that the knight cannot be captured. It's a very complicated line. But my opponent here played a move queen e2, just protecting the pawn with the queen. And I was a little bit suspicious that if I would play the move queen e7, they would not push the pawn and they would just keep developing. And actually, when you are analyzing your games and you want to check the openings, don't check the engine because engine does not understand. But go here in openings and you see what is the main move. And the main move is actually queen e7. But I'm right here, white is not pushing the pawn on e5, but is playing the move knight c3. And here I have to keep going with the move d5, trading my weak pawn because after take, takes, I can take with this pawn, then the queens are going to be traded, and this is going to be an equal position. Instead, I play the move d6. That apparently is an inaccuracy, but again, when the engine tells you uh, inaccuracy, but the evaluation is still the same, just ignore it, please. 
okay, the bishop, uh, the knight is going out, the bishop is out, now all the pieces are going to be developed, and we have opposite side castling, right? So also here, you might want to attack the enemy king. So I think I went with the rook there, exploiting the open file. Uh, but I have to say, my pawn structure here is a little bit weak. Now they played f3, uh, probably they want to go with g4, h4, um, and keep going, push the pawns. Here, uh, my next move is an inaccuracy, knight d7. Uh, I was a little bit looking into it, and the main move, the best move, is bishop here, according to the engine. But then if we turn on the engine, we let the engine work. Okay, now it's saying actually rook e8. <laughs> okay, rook e8 has, apparently is the best move. Anyway, after you, after you play knight d7, it apparently is a terrible, well, it's an inaccuracy. Again, the engine evaluation is 0 0.06. So, again, don't trust the engine. <laughs> trust Alessio. So I went with the knight back, and what's my plan? Uh, we were, humans are working with plans. I thought I would like, I have fewer space. When you have fewer space, you have to trade pieces. And so I was thinking about playing the move bishop g5. And that's why my opponent played the move queen d2, avoiding bishop g5. So I went simply with the move uh, with the bishop on f6, activating the bishop on this diagonal. My knight will go on, on c5 or on e5, my bishop here, and I will have a very nice position. Now g4 is played, and I played bishop e5. Again, for me, it's good to trade pieces. They went back because they don't want to trade, but now boom! My queen is here attacking this pawn and also looking at this knight. This is basically a double attack. It's not the most powerful of the double attacks because after they push the pawn, what I achieve is that I just trade everything and now I create a new weakness in my opponent. But now I have a really nice move, knight of six. This is again a double attack. I'm attacking this pawn and this pawn. And I think my opponent decided to protect the wrong one because they played the move g5. And that's a mistake because now this pawn is hanging and they don't really have counterplay here. There is a pawn hanging also there, so if they simply develop this bishop here, I can take here, then go to take there. They went to take this pawn and say, okay, we just traded. Now for a second I remember that during the game I was saying, oh, I have a fork. <laughs> but then I heard a bzz, 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 and I realized, oh, the bishop is there. Okay, so I attacked the bishop, the bishop had to move, and now I could take this pawn. Ah, I took it, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is again an inaccuracy, but it seems like a very normal move. They went with the bishop out and now we are in a critical moment. Bishop here protecting the knight. That's such a sweet move. I'm threatening. Knight takes c3. And after bishop takes, I can take it with check and the two bishops are hanging. So this would be like hmm, nearly winning. What they did, they took out my knight. I took back. But now again, there is a double attack. And also here, I will show you the live reaction. Because after my opponent played this move, Rook e1 attacking the bishop, there is an amazing finish. Let, 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 ooh. Check. Hmm. <gasps> okay, check. Check. <gasps> check. Apparently, it wasn't sus enough up to this point, so I decided to play a third game with 94.5 uh, accuracy. And again, I have the white pieces, and again, we play against the Karakan mainline. Now, my opponent didn't play knight f6, but played actually the most played move, which is bishop here, developing the bishop. Usually, the Karakan, that's the exact idea. Before playing the move e6, to develop this other bishop, you want to put this bishop out. Now I play knight g3, so I bring my knight back, but I'm attacking this bishop. The bishop needs to move one more time. And now I'm playing the move h4. If my opponent plays a move like this, I'm playing this, and this bishop is lost. That's why the main move is to play h6. And here, usually white plays also h5, kicking the bishop even back, and now developing the knight. Uh, developing pieces, trading this bishop, and e6. Each side is just developing their pieces, and here I went for Long Castle. This is a very important moment because, again, I like to play spicy games. Usually black is going with Short Castle, and so white is going to attack on this side, black is going to attack on this side, and who is faster wins the game. Bishop out, and knight on e4. 
Uh, here usually you want to trade this knight because it's the only way to push this pawn. That's why this trade is usually good. Now the knight is attacking the queen, I move the queen away. Here there are two ways to retreat the queen, on e2 or on d3, but there is an important difference. Queen d3. Now black has a very interesting idea that could eventually bring to the trade of queens and to go to an endgame. I hate endgames. Queen d5 is attacking this pawn, I play the move c4. And now queen to e4. Now if my queen would be here, I would have to trade the queens because my queen doesn't have squares. I mean my queen could hide to f1 to avoid the queen trades, but that's not really a good idea. Instead, from d3, the queen can go on b3. And this is exactly my preparation, opening preparation. Now I'm attacking this pawn, and I know that I can go capture this pawn even if it looks risky. So castle and here. That's the end of what I know. I know just that I'm attacking this bishop and usually they move it away. Um, I know actually no, I know one more move. After this I also know this one. I'm attacking the queen and here is important because it's a little bit counterintuitive because it might seem like okay we are bringing a rook to the center attacking the queen but actually this rook is very important to protect this pawn and to keep going with the attack towards the king. That's why you play uh, this move attacking the queen. Now the queen has to move. This pawn is protected so you don't have to worry. And now my opponent made a huge mistake because I know that my queen here is in danger and what I want to do is to bring it back. But my opponent made my queen go back with tempo. I am a pawn up so if we trade the queens that's so good for me. I have an extra pawn. We go to an endgame. I'm better. Much better. I might win. So they just avoid the trade of queens. But now again I brought my queen back and they always have to move their queen again to avoid to go to a nearly lost endgame. The queen move one more time and now I don't remember what I played. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what is the sense of this move honestly. Okay, maybe that I'm keeping everything protected. Uh, I don't know honestly. Uh, yeah, I just made a move. Sometimes in three minutes games you just may play a move. I even thought some time for this move. Maybe the queen is just more active. I can... Okay, I see an idea. I can maybe play knight e5 so that this pawn is protected by the queen. Okay, c5 is played and now I went with the rook here attacking the queen. And now a fatal mistake by them. Already they have a lost position according to the evaluation. They took the pawn. And this, my friends, is not what you do. I know that I want to take this pawn here. But my opponent didn't have a direct way to place a rook there and to attack my queen and to counterattack my king immediately. Instead, I have a direct way to attack this pawn. Now, they even took the other pawn, not that they had any other move. Um, and I took there. Uh, okay, that's actually a serious mm, mistake because apparently there is a much better move because you see that the evaluation went down two points. So here you have to see what's the best move. Okay, it's bishop e1. Apparently the queen has no squares anymore to go, so this move just wins the queen. Well, it makes sense, but I didn't want to get caught again, so I said, okay, what's the most human move here? I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> I'm taking this, uh, uh, this pawn attacking this other pawn. This looks also very logical. And after the move knight here, my opponent is again completely lost. And now I think I, I played okay rook here, attacking this pawn. They try to protect it. By attacking my rook. Actually this is an interesting move because now uh, the sacrifice of my rook doesn't work. What I was calculating, let's, ma let's make any other move, I can now sacrifice the rook, the knight takes, I take with the other rook, the king goes there and this is checkmate. So this is the threat. That's why the move f5 is really genius because it's blocking my queen from getting there. Now the rook sacrifice doesn't work anymore. That's why I played rook back and now the queen is again out of squares. The queen cannot go anywhere. Well the queen is lost no matter where it goes. So they took my rook and this, now you look at the time situation, 18 seconds versus 28, but okay, I have an extra queen, uh, I brought my bishop back, I gave a check, I took a free pawn, attacking the rook and the g7 pawn, so this is really good, and now I pushed my pawn attacking this one more time. My opponent defended really well for being in under such a time pressure, and you see my time, I'm getting also low on time. The knight goes away, I went with the Knight here attacking this pawn and supporting this pawn to be pushed. I give a check and now there is a free pawn and I take. I'm impressed how good we played to be in such time scramble. The knight goes uh, there and now I play this very little sweet move. Um, I want to give this check here which is nearly checkmate then the rook has to be sacrificed and my opponent saw it and so they went with the rook here controlling the square. And now guys I will show you what happened during the game.
That's so beautiful. Oh no, my knight! <laughs> oh, it still works. <laughs> ah, the old, the old fashioned, you know. Amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, this is a little bit of a parody of what happened uh, recently. I don't cheat and I hate cheating in chess. It's a serious problem. It can make this game so much less fun. Uh, so guys, enjoy the game and enjoy playing beautiful games and learn from your mistakes. Bye. Thank you for watching.